Papo vibe we on Lately I ain't even home I'm working trying to put myself on Ain't chillin' till I'm on my throne Papo vibe we on Hello guys Welcome to Boxing Block Center The home of Nigerian and African boxing And please if you're new to this channel Make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now and also go to the notification bell icon, click it and select all. Oh, so I'm drop a new banger, a new exclusive video, you definitely be notified. Everywhere contender Louis King Kong Otis from Cuba has stated that uh, after Joshua should fight him, I forget about. Usyk because Usyk is too small according to Luis Ortiz he said Usyk too small I don't know Joshua should fight me he also emphasized on the possibility of him uh, fighting Andres Jr uh, to the point where he went he attended the fight and original last fight against Chris Arella looking for a fight but Rose Jr. said that he needs a tune-up so in other words and Rose Jr. the chameleon ducked Louis King Kong Otis let's take a look at this statement right here he said I quote I have been trying to get in the ring with Dillian White but he refused to fight me so I went to the Andy Rose Jr. versus Chris Ariola fight and again I got a no because Rhee said he would need another tune-up Otis told BoxingC.com So now that Joshua vs Fury can be done I feel that me and Joshua would be an explosive fight So Eddie Hearn, Joshua, Jay Jimenez, Luis de Cubas Jr. Uh, Heyman, I'm here and I'm ready Let's try and make this fight happen Let's try and make this happen Why wait? You already have the date don't fight Usyk, he's too small for you. He's a cruiserweight. Give me a shot. You don't even have to put your belts on the line. Those are the words of Louis King Kong Otis. It is very interesting that Louis King Kong Otis thinks um, that Usyk is too small. Forgetting the fact that Usyk, despite, you know, may not be like... I may not been impressed with his last two fights, you know, fights against Charles Witherspoon and of course Derek Del Bush. The fight didn't look good on you know look good in because he came from the cruiserweight division. I understand that. But there is no denying the fact that Usyk is still one of the best boxers alive right now. And so many people Believes. I don't know if they are Joshua haters or they are Fury fanboys or they're just people that like Usyk. Usyk is he's got a character that is very likable. The guy is weird, the guy is strange, the guy is friendly, the guy is nice, you know, the guy is like open minded. You know, at the same time, we don't have to we, we shouldn't look at the fact the look look for the fact that Usyk remains one of the best boxers alive okay it's a fact so joshua hadn't that guy to his resume he's a big accomplishment because if you look at Usyk and joshua's career how he started Usyk has been boxing since he was i don't know maybe five years old joshua got into the game at age 18. so you know lewis otis coming on saying oh it's too small and other stuff well the last time i checked Usyk is 6'4 so is it too small maybe similar eye to Dylan White that's not being too small you might say the guy doesn't punch hard but there are many evil ways who don't hit hard let's also not forget that who seek beat uh Michael Hunter you know that was a one-sided beating it was a boxing masterclass by Usyk so Usyk is a is a is a, is a threat to anyone even to Luis Ortiz himself 
So Lewis is saying, oh, just to fight him, he said, okay, he attended the fight of Andrews Jr. and uh, Chris Ariola, you know, and he wants the fight, but, you know, uh, Ruiz Jr. basically told him, listen, I need a turn of fight. That shows right there that Ahimon is not doing his job as your advisor. You know, because all, all these guys, they, they, they're begging Joshua for a payday. They discredited Joshua's next fight already, saying, oh, fight me. You know, Dylan White recently came out saying the same thing as well. Like, all of a sudden, these guys are coming right now. These guys should be fighting each other. I want to see Dylan White versus uh, Luis Otis. I want to see Andrew Junior versus Dylan White. I want to see Michael Hunter versus Ergovic. In fact, I want to see Usyk versus Efia Jagba. Right, like that bad name is not being mentioned a lot. I understand the reason why, because a lot of these guys know that they have a, everything to lose against a Jagba and so little to gain. A Jagba might be what you guys might say are saying, oh, he needs to work on his skill set. How oh, is this? He 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 is he's one dimensional. One thing you can never go with Jagba is that the guy only need one punch to knock you out. His power is like none other is the fact Ajakba technically is still, still has a long way to go and he's working on it that's one thing you have to understand so now what really made me like I mean I, I, I mean I, I don't mind seeing the, uh, Joshua versus um, Otis but the thing is that what, 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 what does Joshua have to gain fighting uh, Otis I mean, what will the game fight him? Now, Joshua's aim is to become undisputed. And Usyk is in his way. Because Usyk is mandatory, WBA mandatory. And Joshua has to fight Usyk in order to have a chance at the undisputed crown. Now, these guys know, they know it. But still, they want to use all this trash talking method. And in other words, you know, begging in a way, you know, like or talking trash to get to want to get to try to get a fight. When Joshua offered Team uh, Ortiz, that was back in 2019, they offered him a fight. This was proud to Joshua fighting Andrews Jr. June 1st, 2019. What did Luis Otis team do? Uh, him and, uh, J, uh, Jimenez and the rest, they turned it down. Otis had multiple chances to fight in the Joshua even before he fought Deontay Water in a rematch. He had the chance to fight him, but he didn't, he didn't take a Joshua fight because uh, him and advised him to take the Deontay Water fight, you know, and how much did they get paid? for that fight I heard it's 2 million that's chicken change compared to what Andrew Jr. got paid so that's what I'm saying if you are not getting a fight you want to have especially if the fighter you are seeking to fight is in the same stable as you are and you're not getting it it means there's something wrong so Otis you go back to the drawing board Go back to, to the line. There are so many everywhere right now that needs fight. You know, we need to start seeing fights like this. I understand OT is already 60 years old. Okay, he has family to take care of and all the stuff. But at the same time, Joshua for the fight, he turned it down. That could have been the biggest IS payday. Joshua was ready to bless you. But he turned it down because he was too greedy. Your team, we're, we're, we're greedy. Jay Jimenez, you know, used every excuse on the book to avoid that fight. All in the name of, you know, satisfying her him. Well, look at what happened. And now, Otis, you have to go back to the drawing board. Go back to the line. The queue is very long. You have to stay in the queue. Including Andrews Jr., Andrew Jr. is, is crazy. It's he, 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 he so funny. Yeah? He's fun. He's very, he's very funny that Andrew Jr. told Otis that 
I need I need a tune up to fight you. But he wants to get in the ring with Anthony Joshua immediately because he knows the money is there. He knows, you know, he know what he got. He know what he gained after he fought Joshua. So this is, this is the reason why I said, Andrews Jr., when you wake up in the money, the first thing you have to do is um, take Anthony Joshua, okay? Because he's your, he's your landlord. He made you. You know, you thank God. God used Joshua to, 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 to bless you, to change your life. You know, although you've been a chameleon, you abandoned your team. So, it is what it is. But one thing is certain, I, I believe Louis King Kong Ortiz should go back to the drain board. The queue is too long. And the Unified Everywhere King of the whole universe, and also the only two-time Unified Everywhere King or ruler in the whole wide world, Anthony Joshua has got some business to take care of. And that is the, the business, the trouble, the problem of Ole Zona Usyk. Joshua should not in any way or shape or form forget that Usyk is still a very dangerous fighter. He might not possess the punching power that the others possesses, but remember, the Everett Division, it, re it requires only one punch. Usyk... He's not a weak puncher. He's a very good puncher. He doesn't possess the devastating power punch, but he still can punch. And that has to be respected. Joshua is getting ready for this fight right now. And um, that's what he wants to do next. Guys, give your, your thoughts below. Like the video, share, subscribe. This is the home of Nigerian African boxing. You know, right here you get exclusive bangers, exclusive, um, I mean, interviews. Talk shows, traditions, support your fellow African, support your fellow Nigerian. I'm kind of the only one doing this in the African community, in the Nigerian community. And I want to take it forward, I want to take it far. And we will, with the help of you guys, with you guys' help, with you guys' support. God bless you all. God bless Africa. God bless Nigeria. God bless the whole boxing world. Stay blessed. Thank you.